Hello, I am re-recording this intro because uh, I learned through OBS that if you plug in a, a mini DV camera and the computer detects it, uh, OBS will automatically start to record audio from that camera. So there was a horrible doubling of the audio that made the intro almost unusable. So uh, today, what we're going to learn is we're going to learn how to capture when D, uh, we're going to learn how to capture mini DV tapes through Win DV. Maybe asking. Eric, I've seen your other videos. They're a lot better edited. Uh, I don't want to edit this video. I don't have the time or the patience to edit this. I just don't feel like it. But people have been asking me, how do I capture through? Um, how do I capture my uh, digital tapes? You know, uh, how do you how do you capture it? You know, I I haven't searched the internet ever, uh, and I don't know how Google works. And I, and or the articles, you know, and I'll I'll be fair. Or the articles on Google are outdated and they don't work and they're way too complicated. So hopefully this video is going to show you everything that you need to know. So we're going to start with a Sony Handycam, and then later on in the video, I'm going to show you a JVC uh, camcorder. And they're the same. They use, one uses this one uses Mini DV. This one uses Digital Eight. And so what we're going to do, uh, you're going to see later on whenever this video cuts over, there's going to be a little uh, weirdness in the audio, which is fine. It's not going to be bad, and it'll go away towards the end of the video. Uh, but it's not totally unusable, which is why I don't feel like recording all that over again. But what uh, what is going to end up happening that I'm going to learn that was very awesome is whenever I try to connect this while recording with OBS on my computer, WinDV did not have a fun time connecting to my camera. It kept trying to connect to any of these other cameras. So in order to fix that, I had to unplug all the cameras. But today, we're gonna actually get into what you need. Okay, so video actually starts now. Intro's over, video starts now. What you need, you need a, and you can look in the corner right here, you're gonna need a camera with FireWire, all right? You're going to need a desktop PC. Do not buy an old laptop that has FireWire. Do not buy a USB cable to FireWire. That will never work. It does not work. The interfaces are totally different. The voltages are different. They will, you will never find a USB to, maybe, maybe, maybe. But as of right now, you will never find a cheap USB to FireWire adapter. Maybe not even an expensive one. I think there is one that, uh, uh, one of the guys on YouTube made a video about that did, but it was way back. You're not going to find one. Get a FireWire capture card, PCI or PCIe to FireWire. Get your desktop. Put the FireWire card into your into your PCIe slot. Get a quality gold-plated FireWire cable. Uh, all, almost all cameras are going to have this tiny little end. Look at the picture on Amazon. I don't know what this is called. I think this is a FireWire 400, and the big one's called the FireWire 800. Get one that has a small tip to a big tip. Uh, get the FireWire card that has a big end because these small tips are finicky and they suck and they break, which is why so many of these cameras FireWire plugs break. Uh, plug it in, uh, restart your computer, make sure the drivers are installed. Okay, we got all that stuff. Plug it into your card, plug it into your camera. What you're gonna do is, and I'm going to move my video up real quick so you can see. Uh, when you turn the camera on, your computer's gonna detect it. Boom, look at that. Okay, now I'm going to turn this off so you don't hear my uh, echoey voice. Okay, so once that's plugged in, what you're gonna do is then you're gonna open up OBS and um, throughout the rest of this video, I'm going to show you how to convert that video from uh, 60 frames interlaced to 60 frames progressive through Handbrake. Biggest reason why is most times when you upload AVI video to YouTube, or anywhere else, or if you automatically import it in Premiere, it converts it to 30 frames per second, which is not, that it does not look like tape footage. Tape footage was smooth. It looked surprisingly nice. And a lot of the times, uh, tape footage gets a bad rap because uh, the interlaced uh, nature of it, excuse me, the interlaced nature of it and how the cheap uh, deinterlacing by just converting it to 30 frames per second, that, uh, kills a lot of the motion that was captured in the video. So we're gonna do that so you can preserve your videos in the highest quality. Uh, so going forward on the original intro, I tried to open up WinDV and found out that uh, the camera would not detect. So we're gonna cut past that and you're gonna see past me having just troubleshooted that. And I hope you enjoy the video and uh, thanks for sticking through this long intro. All right, it was quite simple, WinDV hates when you have multiple cameras plugged in. So before you do this, 
This is, this is something we learned together. Before you do this, you're going to unplug all cameras. Now, I was able to get this working with my cameras rolling uh, this way because I had unplugged everything, restarted WinDV, and then plugged all the cameras back in after it detected the signal. Uh, so yeah, it works now, uh, and it works with the camera. Uh, so I have a video set up, uh, tape. This is uh, old customer's tape. Uh, I don't think it shows anybody, but we're fine. I've already looked through all these tapes. They're, they're good. Uh, no surprises. If there are, you'll see a nice little cut in the YouTube video. But uh, all right, so I'm gonna show you. So now we've got the camera plugged in. We've got the screen turned on. You can see on the screen right here, it's the same thing that you see right up here. Uh, maybe I can shrink this down just a little bit to make it a little bit nice and neater so I can watch what I'm doing while I'm doing it. All right, so it's real simple. If you have a, a WinDV or a, a mini DV camera, you clicking this capture button will automatically start the recording. So my recommendation is rewind the tape to the part that you want to start capturing. If it's the beginning of the tape, rewind to the very beginning of the tape. I can't do that on this camera. This camera has a weird glitch that I have yet to figure out what it is, that when you rewind to the very beginning of a tape, or you insert a tape that's at the very beginning or at the very end, it throws a huge error and you have to use a pencil and you have to like bring the tape forward about like 10 seconds past the beginning and then it doesn't, it doesn't bitch at you. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, got your tape in, you got your camera set up, we're gonna click capture. Look at that! It pl automatically plays the video and the tape captures and it shows you there's a timer right here that shows you uh, the uh, amount of time that you've been recording. On my camera, I can hear the audio that's on the, the camera, but uh, you're not gonna be able to hear it through your computer. But uh, if you can hear it through your camera, you can hear it through, uh, it'll, it'll capture through the test tape. So let's go ahead and let's record about a minute of this, and then I'm going to show you how to convert that to uh, a file type that Windows not only likes, but that is also uh, 60 frames per second properly deinterlaced, so it looks smooth like it would have looked on a tube TV. So we're going to record this. I don't know what he's recording. I guess a new house being built. We used to record that. I mean, it's, it comes in handy whenever you record a house that's being built, and you want to see where the studs are and what studs have a. Uh, what studs have pipes running through them and stuff. Uh, we have our house, of course, uh, uh oh, tape's deteriorating, you saw that? That's the tape deteriorating, uh, but all right. So we're at one minute, I'm gonna click cancel. Cancel stops the recording, it doesn't delete it, all right? So as you can see, it's in this folder right here. And so what we can do is we can go to our videos folder. See, here's the videos that I'm recording right here that are gonna go on YouTube. And so we can watch the video on VLC. And if you look on VLC, it looks great. Now you may be wondering, hey, if I play my video on VLC, it doesn't look butter smooth 60 FPS. Well, here's what I did. Deinterlace, automatic. Deinterlace mode, I think it's Yadif. Someone can leave a comment and tell me what that means. Uh, Yadif, two times. If you do one times, you'll see it's 30 frames per second. Hate that. So we're gonna set Yadif to two times and look, it got butter smoothing it. Okay, so we're gonna keep what we know there. We're gonna open up Handbrake now. So with Handbrake open, we're gonna drag and drop our little video file right here. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to pick the output destination folder. Let's just make it the same thing as home. We're gonna put it in videos and we're gonna put it right here. And so it's gonna be named as MP4. So I created a preset for here. I called it, uh, I have DVD pass through. That works out really nice. I also have GPT deinterlaced. I named it as GPT because Chat GPT help me out with this. You got to use your uh, use your uh, your whatever you can use on the internet to help you out. Okay, so uh, I always align AV start. I don't know why. Just do it. Set it. You can set it as MP4. Uh, Premiere does not like MKV, so we're not going to do that. I like to take off the anamorphic unless you captured your DV in an am anamorphic widescreen, and you can go ahead and do that. Uh, but all my DV stuff that I capture. I capture it four by three because why would you want widescreen? If you want to shoot widescreen and make it look cinematic, just get a new camera and don't shoot old looking footage. I'm shooting with old cameras because I want the old aesthetic and that's four by three and that's what everybody shot with because that's what everybody had. Okay, filters, interlace detection, fast. I don't know if you should set it to anything else. That's just what I put it to. Fast, deinterlace, Yadif, preset, Bob, anything else I found puts it at 60 frames per second. So what we need to do 
What we need to do, actually I can just put this right here. What we can do is we can go to H265. I do H265 10 bit on the NVNC with my NVIDIA card because I find that that has the best, um, that has the best, um, it, it looks the less com the least compressed. There's whenever I've selected H two six four NVNC uh, through the, to encode the video, I noticed a significant drop in video quality. Uh, but you may only have H two six four as the encoding. You may only have CPU encoding. Uh, but the main important thing is to set the filters to fast, Yadif, and Bob, and you will get the sixty frames per second. So let's do H two six five ten bit. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna set it to slowest quality, twenty. It's whatever you whatever you want. I have this set to do AC three bit rate six hundred and forty. It won't let me go higher, or I would because look at that PCM fifteen hundred kilobits per second. No subtitles. I uncheck create chapters. Okay, cool. We have all that set up. All that's balling like a sphere. Okay, we've checked that. Now we can just start the encode. You can preview it first, but we're gonna start the encode. We're gonna let it encode. We're gonna watch it. Let's see. Should go pretty quick. NVNC is pretty awesome. Makes it really quick. And we're gonna let that do its little little dude. Cool. All right. Let's go back to the video file. Let's see. This is the uh, AVI file. And if I refresh, this is 22%. Let's see. Open destination directory. Oh, it moved it to here. All right. Sweet. Okay. So we're in the destination directory. It looks like it here. I'm going to move this over to this folder real quick. Okay, so we have this, and we're going to uh, double click this. And if you look, there's our video file, and it's smooth as day. I can turn off de interlacing, right, and you'll see it's still smooth, 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 smooth. I'll turn it back to automatic because I'm going to go back to here, and you'll see. Pretty good, uh, pretty good quality. I don't, uh, I don't notice anything there. But yeah, you can do that for all your video files. Any video that you've ever seen me upload, uh, whether it's on my page, the Shroons Vault, or the Shroons. If you look on their video, they have a, a Olive Tree video that we did, and the Death Taxes music video. That has, uh, that was captured with uh, DB, and it was captured through this exact same method. The only difference is I used Adobe Premiere to deinterlace it. And I didn't touch the, uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, encode the footage until the very end of the uh, Premiere, because Premiere works well with AVI files, and as long as you have it set to uh, interpret the footage as 60 frames per second, uh, and your timeline set to 60 frames per second, that's another little little tip. Uh, whenever you import AVI footage directly from WinDV into Premiere, it's going to set the frame rate to 30 frames per second. Just go in the, uh, I don't know what it's called, the timeline or whatever it is, just go in the sequence settings and then change it to uh, 59.94 frames per second and then make sure it's set to progressive. And it'll handle the deinterlacing exactly like Handbrake does. If you have a bunch of AVI files and you want to combine them together, you can do that. But that should be it. We're going to do one more. We're going to test the, uh, we're going to test the JVC camera. Uh, Fingers crossed, this just works. So I'm gonna turn off the camera first, and then I'm going to gently unplug this. We're gonna move this over. We're going to find the port. It's right here, see that? There we go, this camera, the port's getting a little how you doing on this camera. We're gonna put this into play mode. This camera has been giving me issues. It's, it's, not, it's not too happy, it's been sitting on a shelf for a while. But we're gonna see, if I put this right back to here, See, it's doing that thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stop the recording and uh, I'm going to disconnect all the cameras. I'm gonna put it right back and then this should be working and we'll see it. All right, we are back, back in the New York groove. All right, so what we're gonna do now, pretty simple. Uh, you can, if you just click play on your camera, by the way, it should be able to find the uh, selection. So this is some unseen shroom footage. This is from the shroom vlog. We're gonna go and we're gonna rewind it back to where we want it to be. And we wanna start capturing. I click pause on the camera. I don't know if you saw I was doing it with this. We're gonna click capture now. And look at that. By the way, if you see dropped frames, uh, no bueno. 
uh, I usually uh, will stop and start all over again if I have dropped frames. But, okay, so what we're going to do with this is we're going to let it record for a quick little second. It's just capturing the same way. Now, this is mini DV. The last one we showed was Digital 8. Oops, copyright. So let me talk over this so you can't hear the copyright on the music. But, all right. Okay, I can't talk for that long. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop this at 30 seconds. It automatically pauses the camera. I don't know if you notice it over here. So what I'm going to do now is that's we are done with. Oh, you can also use this straight up as a camera. You'll see my little Raspberry Pi behind my desk if I switch this up. Oh, maybe not. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole process of disconnecting everything again, but you can use it straight through Firewire. It'll capture it. That's great if you have, uh, I don't know, if you want to use it as a webcam, don't do that. Uh, all right, so now this is in the video folder. We're going to test it in the YouTube test folder. Here's the video. Same thing. Uh, I'm not going to play, or maybe you can hear the audio through that. But uh, that's it. You'll go through the same process with Handbrake with uh, Mini DV. Hopefully, 2025, this should work for all through Windows 11, all right? Windows 7, 8, 9, 10, there's no Windows 9, whatever, 11, it should work. Um, so now you know, and you can do this yourself, and if you search this up on Google, hopefully you find me in this really poorly put together video. If you look at my other channel, I put together videos a little bit better. Better. I used to be a media production major, and I gave that up. I'm doing computer science now. That's why I write uh, codes and for programs and stuff. And um, I was going to see if I could find the camera that I wrote the software for, but I'll link that in the description. And if y'all really want to know about that software, I'll make a video on it one day, but you can also just look it up on the GitHub, and it tells you exactly how to use it. Um, anyway, my name is Eric. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something of value today, and I hope that this really helps you out. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I don't get notifications for comments, but I do check them every now and then. So maybe you'll get a reply in like a week, a month, a year, and uh, I'll get back to you on the video. Who knows if this pops off, blows up. I may go into more detail on how to do other stuff. Um, that's basically it. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll try to answer them. Uh, I may have answered them in uh, previous videos, or they may be answered in other videos. But uh, yeah, if anything that I showed doesn't work, or you have any troubleshooting, let me know. If you plug in your camera, I'll answer one of the questions that may be frequently asked. If you plug in your camera, and you turn it on, and you put it to VCR mode, and your ca cable is 100% plugged in on both sides, and you didn't buy the cheapest cable you could possibly find on Amazon, you bought an actual quality gold-plated FireWire cable, and it the computer does not detect the camera. I'm sorry, but your camera's probably dead. Good news for you. Go on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. Any mini DV camera will play your mini DV tapes as long as they're the mini DV format and not HDV. HDV can play both of them, which is baller. Uh, same for Digital 8. If you have a Digital 8 camcorder and you have a tapes that play Digital 8, as long as they're Digital 8 and not High 8, all Digital 8 cameras, camcorders, can play Digital 8 tapes. But with that being said, thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around. I don't know how long this is. Hopefully it's not longer than 20 minutes. Um, yeah, thank you so much.